Oh, sure, sure. But don't try and change the subject on me. Jimmy, you'll make mistakes, but let them be your mistakes. Use your eyes, your heart, your brain, your instincts. Make up your mind, and then go ahead. Do yeah. you think I'll ever learn half what you know? Yeah. Well, you have to begin where I leave off. And you think you're being fair to me? To yourself? To the medical profession? Oh, what do you mean? You haven't seen Dr. Lockberg in two months. Why? Because I'm a good doctor. And I know what's the matter with me. Cancer isn't necessarily hopeless. Well, every time I intend to call Lockberg up, something important turns out. Nothing is that important. Look, if I have to finish any part of what you've started, you have to stay here and teach me as long as you can. All right, Jimmy. I'll call him this afternoon. Come on. Well, I always told to be here at 5 o'clock. Come on, come on, drink your milk. Well, things people do for the sake of their health. Don't think you can hide from me, Dr. James Kildare. Look here, Molly, but this is my bedroom, and even the superintendent of nurses hasn't got any right to come barging in. Oh, be quiet. Dr. Kildare, that's Logan Informs. You can't take the and use it to go to the hospital emergency department. Oh, yes, I did, but you see, Mr. I see everything. Well, don't you worry. I ordered that something as a public precaution. A public precaution, my foot. But a man had nothing more to take than a broken arm. I personally examined that suit of clothes and found definite traces of leprosy. Leprosy? Leprosy. Bubonic plague, the housemaid's knee, and a slight trace of scandalian hookworm. Scandalian hookworm, you fool. Miss Eisenhower, there was a job waiting for a vehicle to close. Let it get you, have not the milk. Molly, you know what else you can say about me? I'm a man of honor. I said I'd drink one glass of milk, and one glass of milk I drank. Give me my cigarettes, please. And how does the bottle still fall? <laughs> You'll drink this glass of milk or no cigarettes today. Now give me my cigarettes. We're still in your pocket. I forgot to take them out this morning. Oh, I've been trying for 25 years to force somebody to take care of themselves. It's a little hard to break the habit. We'll do it along without me for a while, supporting our run-up to have a doctor, Dr. Lane. Yes, Grayson's in pretty bad shape. Let me know when we're in West Torture. That's what I meant to do. Then later in the afternoon, we're going for a drive in the country. Well, how are you thinking back, Senator Lisa? You'll do your world good. Uh, maybe. I've ordered a nice big car, so the three of us will be comfortable. Pretty nice. Uh, you and me and Nurse Mary Lamont. Yeah, well, why not Mary Lamont? She isn't engaged to Dr. Lane, even if we did go out with him last week. What do you expect her to do? Die an old maid because you only get $20 a month? I don't expect her to do anything of the sort. Dr. Uh, Gillespie, I guess it's pretty obvious to you how I feel about Mary Lamont, but I can't and I won't say anything to her about it. After all, $20 a month is $20 a month. We're ready, Dr. Lane. Good, let's go then. I want to see you after this operation. Dr. Lane, a package arrived for me this morning. It contained a dozen pair of beautiful silk stockings. Silk stockings? Silk stockings. I've sent them back except for three things. I don't know where they came from. I can't believe you sent them. <laughs> Besides, they're awfully pretty. I'm not saying. But I'm going to be dedicated to them every night. All right, Greg. We'll <laughs> celebrate a successful operation. I need a successful operation. Oh, it's only the fools who are talking. Anyone knows mortality and brain surgery is high. Yeah, but you can't explain that to a dead patient. Dr. Gillespie still believes in you. You're operating on his patient, aren't you? I still believe in myself. But this time I've got to. We've got an operation. Now, come on, let's go on. How are you feeling, Mr. Grace? Sleeping. Shut me I'm going to do my best to fix you up as good as you. Dr. Dean. Jimmy, do you have a cigarette? Oh, Mary. Please, Jimmy, give me a cigarette. By the way, Dr. Gillespie, what do you want to be? So, uh... Dr. Lane, I was in the gallery, and uh, the operation was a success, but the patient died. Mary. Just so you want to. Just off the assembly line this morning. Forty one brand new layers. Thought of even things up in there. Anything about life and death? Mm. I didn't think about it that way. I just happened to come here. I know instincts were right. It's the best place you could have come to. This is what it's really all about. Jimmy, Dr. Lane did everything he could. No one could have done anything, could he? No one. See, Mary, I prescribed an operation. I knew he performed it. But both knew how how slender Jimmy was. That's our job. That's one of the hardest things we have to learn. I have a gun, Jeff. That's what people need. Pure sweet air. Fill your lungs with. Open up your pores to the sunshine. What's the matter with you, Mary? You look as if you hadn't opened a pore for months. I did surgery today. I did Dr. Lane. Oh, Mary, that patient had one chance in a hundred minutes to do the operation. One chance in a million of living without him. You're absolutely right. I reported that fact to Crew. What did Dr. Crew say? Well, what could he say? Too many people die. Dr. Gillespie, Greg needs help. Dr. Lane. You're right, Mary. Something ought to be done about it. Isn't anybody interested in where we're going? We're going to the Messenger Institute at the university. Who told you? It wasn't me, Dr. Gillespie. I suppose you told him why, too. No, sir. I didn't know that. Well, then I'll tell you. We're going to the Messenger Institute for Medical Research because I've got business there. And I'm taking you to the Right. 
Oh, Mr. Messenger, talking to Mr. Rossi. This building must be smacked with equipment. There's a shiny stuff. Now, listen, Egghead. Uh, the eminent and important Dr. Squires was known as Egghead in the medical school, for reasons you're both too long to know. Well, then, I'm not supposed to do this for that, and I'm just the guy who can do it again. Now, listen to you, Squires. We all know this is the finest institute in America. Cover the point. <laughs> Very well. The point is, I have a job for Dr. Kildare. Job for me? Oh, it hasn't been for me. It's taken two hours to tell you that. Dr. Kildare, Mr. Messenger feels that he owes to you his daughter's sanity. Perhaps I'm right. Yours was a remarkable instance of correct diagnosis and treatment. I congratulate you. I'll tell him the job pays 500 a month. 500 dollars. And you'll have a free hand here to pursue whatever research you choose. And if you attend your knitting, when you're an old married man, you'll inherit a gate job. 20,000 bucks a year. I mean, hey. Well, why don't you say something? Don't stand there like a bump on a log. Oh. Well, it's the sort of thing you dream about. Uh, Dr. Gillespie, you knew all about this? That means you want me to take it? Do I want him to take it? Do you hear that again? Uh, these youngsters are hard to please. Uh, show them the house and go to the job. House? Oh, yes. Uh, shall we go see it? I bought it some tea. Tea. <laughs> when I first knew him, he thought a clean for a few minutes. Now he drinks tea. <laughs> It's Mr. Messenger's idea that a man does his best work by the surrounding variety of things. Thank you, Russ. I think it would be happy here to begin there. Happy way. It'd be crazy if he couldn't. He's still around, Jimmy. It's your party, you know. I feel a little tired. I think I'll stay here and have a spot of tea with Dr. Squires. Maybe a crumpet or two. Well, Eddie, how am I doing? If I hadn't known differently, I'd have thought you really wanted him to take the job. This is the greatest opportunity Jimmy will ever have in his life. If he takes it, and all I've planned will come tumbling down around my ears. What's up to say, man? What's up to say, man? I'm supposed to get you a glass of milk. Huh? Yeah. I'm so full of milk now, I'd be it isn't true, this sort of thing doesn't happen. But it is true. Not everything wrong with you. What? Dr. Gillespie wants you to take it, doesn't he? Does he? He wouldn't think about the salary for another day. Oh, right now, I'm not thinking about the money. But you must think about it. It's your future, your whole life. Who was it wanted you to see this house? It was Dr. Gillespie, wasn't it? Yes, Mary. He even talked about the future. That's what he said. I wish I knew what he was thinking. Well, you want to come out of the Mary, you have to get out of me tonight. Just got a date. I'm going to ask the Jimmy. Hey, break it up, you two. But Dr. Gillespie, I think we'll be ready for you to move in, say, uh, next Monday. Oh, very kind, Dr. Squires. Mr. Messenger generosity is tremendous, but uh, I'm afraid I'll have to take it over and let you know. Oh, of course, Dr. Kildare. Take it over. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, take it in. I think I'll take that note now. Dr. Squires, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Squires. Dr. Squires, 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 Dr. Squires. Dr.
Hello? Superintendent Bird speaking. Beginning tomorrow morning, Nurse Mary Lamont starts a staff surgical nurse, salary increase accordingly. She's to be assigned to Dr. Gregory Lane. Is that you, Molly Parker? I'm taking a bath. If it's you, Molly Parker, well, who's not smoking a cigarette? Anyone else can go shoot themselves. Me. So what do you mean? Forging it here at three or four o'clock in the morning. What do you think this is? A six-day bicycle race? It's only a quarter after ten. What do, you, what do you want in the middle of the night? I'm not trying to take the messenger down. Why, you unmitigated little upstart. Do you realize, Jimmy, you'll never have another opportunity like that as long as you live? I'm staying here because I am selfish. Ever since I was a kid, I know I wanted to be some kind of a doctor, but I didn't know what or where. Now I do know. I want to be a diagnostician, and you're the only one that can teach me. Jimmy, I'm the happiest guy in the city. As a matter of fact, I've been sitting right here since six o'clock waiting for you to come in to tell me a decision. Oh, sorry, I'm busy. Well, I'm too pleasant there. Well, you know. Oh, I've got enough room to lose office. Seems like you're hurting my surgery. I want to catch up right away. Uh, do you mind if I borrow the water? Yes, he's been raising change to you about that, too. Yes, I'll start tomorrow morning, assisting Dr. Lane. Well, perhaps I can arrange to have you transferred to someone else. No, 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 thanks. So what's the matter with this fellow Lane, anyway? I've heard he inherited a lot of money, and yet he wants to stick around this skating No, no, that's not true. He's had money all his life, but he happens to walk this He also happens to be interested in Mary Lamont. Or I'll fire three or four of my pet students. Is that Mary Lamont's business? You have no regrets about that? Mm -hmm. Dr. Gillespie, if I told you once, I told you five times. But all right, all right, all right. Don't bite me at all. Furthermore, Dr. Gillespie, it's past your bedtime. All right, Papa. I'll go to bed like a good boy. And I'll be kind to dumb animals, and I'll wash behind the ears. So who do you think you are, Molly Bird and Long Pants? Can I tell a hospital emergency? Just a minute. Go on. I was saying last night, you made me start. Me and that new blue shirt on a jaw, I did. He's actually in a duck finger. But all of a sudden, I find him paralyzed from the waist down. No, I didn't touch a drop. Just one little glass of Irish lemonade in my client's place. But it was still Wayman Rice. He would have said one word about me staying in this evening. I'll be asking the budget for you. Emergency one coming up. Very good. No identification. Nothing but a cane of five dollar bill. You don't know what I'm talking about? Pockets. All he had on was an overcoat over some pajamas and a pair of pants. You know, Howie, I got a rope figure out what was the matter with you last night. It was something I tried the night before with that guy from Pittsburgh. I'll bet it was. But she showed you were so sweet. Carry me home and bring him like an angel all the way.
pretty warm, though. I'm going to keep now. It's pretty stable, but it's a rich man's You better keep the excellent thing. I didn't make a mistake yet. Not one. Well, and how's the face? But it's a stage. And I thought it was wise. Patient showed signs of becoming violent. What can I make more of this? You said your patient has lost his mind. Apparently. Dr. Lane wasn't able to patient recover consciousness. But you had the patient's face. Because in your opinion, he's now deranged. Yes, I see. Dr. Lane, the usual patient for a private room. A leaf to the door. Then I'll see you in my office. Dr. Kerr, you'll want me there, too, won't you? No, this is Dr. Lane's responsibility only. Nevertheless, I'd like to be there. Don't stick out my calculator. It's my neck. Dr. Lane, I freely concede that the doctor constantly has to make decisions. To operate or not to operate. But also, he must be right when he makes those decisions. Otherwise, we... Wait a minute! I'm in the room. What have I meant? I just left your patient in his mad watch. What are you saying, Carew? Dr. Lane has made one too many mistakes. Dr. Gasly, I was just saying that in this last case, I urged Dr. Lane off. I hesitated a moment, but the second one point was my own. Well, then why kill there on the call? Yes, he insisted on being written. But let me settle this thing once and for all. I decided to operate in a similar case. I'd do it again. Good. Now we know where it was done. Right. Dr. Lane, there is a judgment to deliver the proof. But in this case, you also performed the operation without the patient's permission, violating his legal right. His legal right to die. If you please, Dr. Lane. You, Dr. Lane, have placed this institution in a very serious position. You were suspended from duty pending the hearing for the hospital board morning Friday at noon. I'm sorry. You may go. Dr. Kerr, I'd like your permission to testify that board meeting. My company is there. But how would you possibly help Dr. Lane? Well, I don't know. He don't know. He wants to prove the operation didn't make the patient insane, but he don't know how to do it. Come on, get it out. Wait a minute. Suppose the man was uh, insane before the operation. Suppose the he was suffering from schizophrenia. Oh, oh, oh. I don't think the hospital board would be interested in your guests. Your request is denied. But after he came out of the anesthetic, he spoke into a real Friday. And before the operation, he made it very plain that Friday was more important to him than nothing. Now he's a psychiatrist. If you concern yourself further in this case, neither of us can save you from the unpleasant medical and criminal consequences. Now, there you seem to forget one thing. Dr. Lane went ahead after the patient had refused the operation. But if the man had been saying he had no legal right to refuse the operation, which left the decision up to the doctor. Now you're lawyer. I consider the matter settled, Dr. Kerr. Which is the way a high class gentleman says, get out of my office and mind your own business. Come on, Jim. You know what I'll for the rest of the day? Oh, I guess so. Might be a good idea. Go on out and take any show. Forget all about this little difficulty. No, don't think it's so little. Then I haven't been here long to get the hospital viewpoint, but it's Lane's kicked out and look as though he murdered the patient. And we know he didn't. How do you expect to track down the identity of one unknown lunatic? If you get yourself tangled up in this lane affair, you might as well hunt yourself a new job, because I need an assistant that works for me. I'll pay that on your harmonica. What are you, big man? A magnificent man to head this hospital, but you don't know any more about handling Jimmy Kildare than, than I do. I'm a sentencer. I think they have to do this with my son for the right name. In the old days, they used to draw and quarter them, nail up their heads on London Bridge. If they even know they're merciful, the faces we have to throw them out, let them die for the heart. Listen, Mr. Gustafson, you may be a big man in Pittsburgh, but you're no gentleman. You, you gorilla. You take a girl out and throw her full of fancy silk and poison champagne, and the next night I can't move a muscle. Oh, I don't like to say. No thanks to you. But from now on, I'm sticking a hamburger and lemonade with a squash shooting guy who wouldn't even think of playing a dice on a working girl. Goodbye, bro. Emergency. No, I haven't seen Dr. Kildare for an hour. He went out here in a state coach, but he was off for the day. Sure, if I say him, I'll tell him. So, Mr. Pitt. No, Sally, Dr. Kildare is not here, but we're expecting an emergency. Sure, I'm giving you a message. Uh, hello, hello. Sally, Sally, the doctor. Like Joe Wayman or Fog Hanker back yet? No, my friend. There's no easy task to give them. Finding them out about such mysterious crazy men is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Oh, no, I know it. Clothes just stock on the silver in the thousands. The locksmith you left the key with set us from any one of a million doors in New York. That is, if it's not from Chicago or Boston. That's what I'm afraid of. Well, there. What? What are you doing here? Nothing wrong. What's the matter? I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. You probably didn't need to see that Well, well, Mrs. Kildare, you're looking younger than your own daughter. Only thing to be your own mother. And you don't record enough for that. I bet you like your old girl. I do, and I tell them all to make them jump. Thanks, man. My, my. Oh, look, it's exactly the big city doctors. I don't know. Tell me. Are you well and happy? Why should I? Both. Well, if you simply said yes, I don't know where, but uh, what's the trouble? Well, what do I think you are, my reader? Yes, I, I am a kind of crossroads. Nobody ever accomplished anything without passing crossroads. The only question is which road do you take? Yes, how simple is all that? Do we need to know? Do you want the wrong thing to take working out? Oh, excuse me, Carter. Well, what do you uh, oh, uh, allow me to present Mr. Joe Wayman and uh, Mr. Foghorn Murphy? Foghorn? What's your real name? Oh. I prefer Foghorn. So, uh, How did you do, Joe? Oh, pretty glad to see. I've been a lot about you and your monkey man. Oh, those stories are exaggerated, Mrs. Kilder. I never even owned a monkey man. Well, sit down. Tell me. Find out anything. Oh, that's a crossroad? Me and the pals went house to house camps of the neighborhood where your school balls run over. We found one house where a guy had disappeared. Oh, go on. This mug disappeared in 1911 with a blonde in a Sunday school collection. Here, here, here. I was going myself at 16. And no peroxide either. And the police won't tell her, but... The police won't tell her, but... Harold? Jay Harold? Oh, excuse me. I won't say no word. I don't have that truck driver to clip your guy. At first he couldn't talk, then he, uh, he changed his mind. But he don't know who the guy is or anything about him. Well, well, don't put that thing in the right pocket. Huh? Why am I always someplace else in a good place? Let me know next time you're down. I'll sock someone for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Doc, I'm sorry we weren't much help. It was kind of tough without knowing the guy's name. Right? That's all right, fellas. Thanks a lot, anyway. Uh, the time Mrs. Kildare was called, maybe I'll call. Oh, yeah, I can't need a taxi. We're just calling on next one that far, Gordon. I'll take Mrs. Kildare in the ambulance if she has to go anywhere. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll accept both invitations. Come on, you let me drive. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> well, now you're stuck, aren't you, son? Hey, yes, madam. Right now I am in trouble. There's one way out, but he's awfully dangerous. Excuse me. I'm awfully sorry to call you, Gordon. But always remember one thing, Dr. Kildare. Trouble is not the means of a lecture, you and me. They are reshaped in other trouble for a couple hundred years. Thanks, Mike. You said something about uh, dangerous, Jimmy. Dangerous to do what? Well, cure an insane man before Friday. So they cure him and now, are they? It's an old fantastic thing. Go to you, who's your cure? It's a gamble. Only two things to think about in a gamble. What have you got to win? What have you got to lose? Him? Everything. My job.
There's a man over in that hospital that's the finest doctor has ever helped the Amy. I know, but I can't ask Dr. Gillespie to help me. You're talking about Dr. Gillespie? I mean, your own father. Oh, of course. Between you and your country. Or between you and Dr. Carew, which might be worse. Mommy, please. 
Say, I have had no clue what can get that ramp out your soul for a piece of my mind. Keep your shirt on, Mary. Oh, you men make me tired. What is it, Jimmy? You asked me how long you waited for her? Yes, I did. Mary, the reason I never said anything to you about anything. Jimmy, I didn't think it fair to even ask you if you'd be willing to wait as long as we'd have to wait. Perhaps I'm going too fast, but good looking guy in this house. I'm going to regularly land on some time with the powers of the world. Well, maybe we can find a nice girl to introduce him to. I'd be so running against you, Mary. Jimmy, I saw the look on Mrs. Adams' face. Five years ago, it's just nothing. Well, then we'll wait just five minutes. I'll be right back. Oh, no, where are you going? I'm going to get that rampant old fossil up into my mind. Wait a minute. To be alone. I want to tell you something. You can't fire me because I won't be fired. And if you don't fire me, you won't stay fired. No, oh, the long range, will you? I owe Hilda. You won't feel like a fool. I mean, you said you were going to make a fool of yourself, didn't you? Well, I said you have to have an instinct for diagnosis and the courage to follow it up. I did. Well, every instinct I had told me that Dr. Lane was a good surgeon. Why, you little bitch. If it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have got the first man. You? Yes, sir. Who was it that had you notified that you were behind the surgery? Mahatma Gandhi? Who was it that you assigned to Dr. Lane? Did the Red Riding Hood? Who gave Dr. Hepworth for tickets to that banquet? Santa Claus? No, lame brain. Even you couldn't have gotten away with that insulin business without my full authority back of you all the time. Of course, Molly Bird helped her best. She made me drink two quarts of milk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, because you're not always going to be lucky. Someday, some of those fantastic crusades of yours are going to kick back on you and feel for you. And then what'll be the good? Thank you. And then what'll be the use of my teaching my job to a man who's going to end up by having his head nailed on London Bridge? Well, you never think of that once you get started. Young Dr. Kilda, yeah. You've got a single track mind. I'm trying to be like you. There's only one man in the world like me. Me. I wish you'd act more like it sometimes. Why, I haven't made a mistake since 1926. Except you. What about Dr. Muffer? Well, what about Dr. Muffer? I saw him last night, 5 o'clock. You made a point. And his family he has spent the entire time teaching him to play double solitaire and smoking cigarettes. Oh, well, Jimmy, suppose I promise you to see Lockburg three times a week and you can stay in the room. Huh? That is, provided you promise not to make a fool of yourself more than three times a year. Why do you think I came up here? Why do you think I've been waiting up here all dressed up in tight pants? Jimmy, please give me a cigarette, will you? Well... This is all they have to do now. Let's tell Dr. Lane about that. Uh, I'll go do that now. Oh, no, no, no. No, that'll keep until tomorrow. Oh, no, no, Lisa. Lane's waiting in the room. I telephoned him when I left the Mrs. Adams. I'll go along with you. Well, I think you're fine. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come on, man. Come on. Where is that sleepy room? Well, I'll give you a hand. How much you got, huh? No, no, no. Fine, Jimmy. You push. As long as I know you're back there, I know you're not in any mischief. Oh, I can see the whole thing coming. The trouble with you is, Jimmy, you've got one of those honest faces. The man can look at you and almost tell exactly what you think. Well, I'm different. Poker face, you look to the call me. Know everything and show nothing. That's me. It's like a sixth sense. I can tell exactly what's going on all the time. Behind my back or through a stone wall. For instance, at this moment, Jimmy, you're wishing you could shake me and join that little one girl. Isn't that what you're thinking? Isn't that what you're thinking? Answer me! No, boss, you think. <laughs> 